So back to 2020 in this studio, I was talking with scientists, well, people like Dr. Judy Mikovits, people like David R. Martin, and they were mentioning North Carolina. They were mentioning this university. They were mentioning connections, financial connections with Fauci and supporting this gain of function research in Wuhan. Again, at the same time, I mean, you know, that did not go over very well with any technology platform whatsoever. Yes. Uh, let alone basic stuff like saying anything against what the WHO said about masks or distancing. Um, but these are ideas I've heard before, three years ago nearly. Yes. And yet all of those were completely silenced by tech platforms, by media, by governments and government officials, by NGOs, by even the science community. Now look, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I actually leave that to guests on my show at times. How do you put your head around the fact that all of these organizations can turn a blind eye to this? How, how does it all happen? How is it even coordinated? I mean, I guess we've got to look in to the Twitter files of how maybe a government organization can do some of that, but you've worked in journalism for many years, in science as well. How do you make sense of all of this happening? Well, I think it's a question of vested interests. I don't think it's, I don't think there's some uh, secret committees meeting in a darkened room in, um, you know, Langley, Virginia, telling the rest of the world what to do. <laughs> Picking up the phone to, to you know, Facebook and saying, please, will you censor this? Although the FBI did that to Twitter. It well, there was, a, yeah, there was a little bit of that going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's more a case of, if you're a scientist working in virology, you really don't want it to be a lab leak because suddenly there's going to be uh, more regulation, less money, um, uh, some pretty uh, uh, reputational issues, etc. So you've got a motivation for it not to be a lab leak, and you really you're, you're just you, your tendency is to always hope that it isn't, right? If you're a science journalist. Uh, and you're talking to these people, you're picking up and you've got, uh, you end up with the same motivation and you see that the people going in the media saying it might be a lab leak don't really know enough about virology and they haven't been on this beat before and so you have a sort of not invented here approach to them and you think, oi, butt out, this is, this is our story, we know, we know better. Um, if you're a politician, you're thinking, well, yeah, but we've got to get this deal through with China on, you know, imports and exports, and we you don't want to rock the boat. And you see this very explicitly in some of those emails around that uh, February meeting. There is a, a very explicit mention of international harmony being important and and uh, the damage to science reputation, Chinese science in particular, as one one of the participants puts it. Um, all of those pressures are real. Where who's got a vested interest in it being a lab leak? Nobody. There's nobody who's saying, oh my God, um, actually, you know, if it's a lab leak, I'm better off. I can't, there, there literally is nobody. Um, you could say that I've got that because I've written a book about it and people would say, phew, you got it right. Uh, but I chose to do this book on this topic not knowing which way it would take me. Alina was the same. She was agnostic on, on the topic to start with. Um, and I could have written a much more profitable book. It hasn't particularly sold. It's sold very well, but not extremely well. You know, I'm not going to make an awful lot of money out of it. Alina and I are both giving half the proceeds to charity anyway. Um, and we think we should, and we're happy to do that. So, uh, you know, the idea that we've, we've got some vested interest in it. And by the way, I think our story is just as interesting if it turns out to be a pangolin or a, you know, a market story, and half the book is about exploring the market theory. And we have two chapters in the book in which we hand the microphone to the lawyer for the defense and the lawyer for the prosecution, as it were, you know, for the lab leak and the, um, uh, uh, the market theory. And you say, make the best case you can. And when I reread them, I find both those chapters moderately convincing. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're still on the fence, you know, apart from us. Who else benefits if it's a lab leak? Nobody's got an interest in that, with the possible exception of, I don't know, you know, some of the anti-Chinese Communist Party people who want to see it fall on its face. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, 
He's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal. And I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.